and welcome back to Book Buzz. This is I am a Shannon. <laughs> this is Miss Shannon. I am a Shannon. This is a zebra. You know, it's a wonderful day. <laughs> and I'm Miss Linda, sitting beside this is Miss Shannon. Um, here for Book Buzz to give you information about what's happening in youth services for the second half of July. Yes, and the first thing we oh, want to touch base upon I is knew. there was a little bit of a confusion in our last episode I about didn't know. what an owl pellet is. Um, and you know, it's, it was taking us back to ninth grade bio, which has been for Miss Linda and I some time. And we were able to do our research, library and research. And we found out that an owl pellet is like a regurgitated mass. And we will be dissecting these regurgitated mass owl pellets the op- with our teens and tweens, yeah. um, on July 30th. So who doesn't want to go through, um, to see It's interesting yeah. because you, because owls eat like a lot of things. Yeah. And you get well, to I didn't see, know like, that, which ooh, would if be you eat a mouse today, here's a little mouse head in there. And I think I'd rather it come out that end than the other end. So, yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Debatable. Oh, I don't know. It's, not, I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. It's like, I don't think it actually gets very far because they, like, can't swallow the bones. That or so then it's like, there's the bones. Ew. Okay. Take what you need and get rid of the rest. All right. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Linda's going to guest star in our regurgitation in our Alpella section. Be there. She's going to be there with her tweezers and her gloves yeah, ready said, to save go. Me, save me a pellet. <laughs> get, get their safety goggles on. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I'll be in a hazmat. <laughs> I'm going to come out with my, my gas. <laughs> Of, it's going to be for this awesome. I'm pellet. excited, though, for this. I mean, that was actually one of the things that was in the recommended in our um, summer reading handbook, which yeah. I was like, okay. That, that would be, be a fun one. Yeah. yeah, we get to pick and choose what we want, the fun things we yes. want to do. Sure. Okay. So, book buzz bits, now that we've clarified that. Yes, <laughs> I feel much better about our pellets. So, um, we, uh, the last program we talked about, I was highlighting uh, authors that have passed away this year. And uh, we're halfway through the year, like I said, and we've already had several in big ones, Mm -hmm. like very, very well known. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last time we talked about Eric Carle. Uh, Today, or this time, it is Beverly Cleary. We love her. And she she died in March, and she lived to be 104. That's insane. Isn't that insane? 104. And her story is really cool. Her... The, her story is very, um, it, it, it's very heartwarming of how, how she, and why she wrote the books that she did. She was born in Mc, McMinnville, Oregon, and, and until she was old enough to attend school, she lived on a farm in Yam Hill, a town so small it had no library. But her mother arranged with the state library to have books sent there, and the mom acted as the librarian in a lodge room upstairs over a bank. How cool is that? That's where Beverly learned to love books. However, the family then moved to Portland, and she, uh, Beverly soon found herself um, in the grammar school's low reading circle, an experience that has given her sympathy for the problems of struggling readers. So I you know, um, funny how life's uh, circumstances, you know, all come together to Mm -hmm. make you a a better person. By third grade, she had conquered reading and spent much of her childhood surrounded by books, either at home or in her public library. Before long, her school librarian was suggesting, uh, this is so cool, you know, when you have those supportive people in your life, that she should write books, uh, write for boys and girls when she grew up. The idea appealed to her, and she decided that someday she would write the books that she longed to read but was unable to find on library shelves. Funny stories about her neighborhood and the sort of children she knew. And because of that, her her, her big characters came to life. They were born, like Ramona Quimby, uh, Henry Huggins, Alan Tebbets. Um, so she was drawing from her experience in a world around her. When um, this one book I'm going to show you in a second, she, act, she did in 1984, won a Newbery Medal. And I will show you that. In the meantime, um, 
I want to give you that. I'd love to know how much they, how many they sold. Always sympathetic, never condescending. She presented her readers with characters they knew and understood. She was the 20th century equivalent of Huck, or her characters were um, equivalents of Huck Finn or Louisa, Louisa May Alcott's Little Woman, and every bit as popular. Okay, here it is. Drum roll. Her book sold more than 85 million copies. And she did all of the human characters and then started adding an animal counterpart. That's where she came up with the motorcycle riding Ralph S. Mouse. That was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I remember my teacher reading that to us aloud in the third grade and then we watched the movie. It, I, the things that stick with you in life. It's been a yeah. while since I've been in third grade. Yeah. <laughs> But that's my favorite one for that yeah, reason. Yeah, her books. Yeah, she has all of those. And if we have time, we'll highlight the, some of the books. Um, but I did want to just highlight the one now because this is the one she won the Newberry for, the Dear like Mr. Henshaw. And it, again, this is a really fast read. Uh, I think it's great for the adults and the kids. It's written in a diary form, a letter form, because he writes to um, what is an author in this book called Mr. Henshaw and then how he learns from Mr. Henshaw of how to be a writer but it also helps him with little different um, issues in his life mm -hmm. and That's she did yeah she did win the award for this and it's it is it's a good book and the Ramonas again, are always fun too. I mean, they're funny. The what? The Ramona. The Ramona. Oh books. yeah, you know what she said about that? Yeah, because she talked about you know Ramona and Beasley. Uh, wasn't that Ramona's little sister? Beezus, yeah. Beezus. Beasley. 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 I think that was a doll in. Was it Mrs. Beasley and Family Affair? Wow, my dating. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So Ramona. Quimby was her most beloved creation. And her credo was, um, uh, Beverly Cleary, that a little person sometimes had to be a little bit noisier and a little bit more stubborn in order to be noticed at all. And that, my friends, Beverly Cleary, Cleary God cool. rest her soul. 104 years. Mm-hmm bringing all of these stories. I think it's safe to say that she lived a very long, happy life. Yeah, for <laughs> well, sure. At least a very long life. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. Yep. 104 is that. Seemed like a beautiful woman. Yes. And I remember re seeing like when she turned 100, when she celebrated that yeah. year. Yeah. And we did it. I remember ago. that. We did a and display. And she had like a, um, an interview and she's like, well, I never planned to live this long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> here you are. Four years later, she still was with us. That's crazy. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Um, one of our more popular um, events that we bring back every single year, whether we're in person, virtual, or whatever, is our Teen 30 Day Drawing Challenge, which will kick off on July 1st. Um, and it goes from July 1st to July 31st, or 30th, really. And every day we have a little draw challenge that we will post on our social media. If you register for it directly, we will also email it to you. The first several that register will get a free sketch pads you can come in and pick up at the library. Um, so, and every day we have a different challenge. And a lot of them are gonna be animal related this year because of our theme being Tales and Tales. Mm -hmm. um, and then for, if you come in to the library and show us your sketch pad, you'll have more, you'll um, win a prize. Or, or get some kind that's of always little, fun something. i really like yeah i like a, that program that you do. yeah it's fun and uh -huh. it's um it, it does no skill it's not nothing is based upon skill it's just for fun just yeah. anything you want to do i love it so and um, we talked about our owl pellet dissection already that's going to be on july 30th um, for grades four through six it's going to be at one to two and then for our seventh through twelfth graders it's from 2 30 3 30 you must sign up for that event we are limited in our space and mm -hmm. we are limited in our owl pellets because apparently they're not as easy to come by um, apparently so <laughs> you uh, have to sign up for that and um we will, everything will be provided for you that you, all the materials that you will need um so it's gonna be a lot of fun it does sound fun yeah we're doing a lot of cool things all right so we are back um the tween book club this is what we're reading i think last time uh the last program I, I failed to mention the date and the time i did give a synopsis of what the story is about last time so what rewatch that program jennifer l home turtle in paradise can sunshine bring out 
bring you out of your shell is what we are reading and um, tweens are ages 9 to 13 approximately. We are meeting uh, by Zoom so you have to register to get your link um, on July 22nd at 4.30. That's when we meet. Uh, again, the first five to register get a free complimentary book and, um, and we just have fun together. We yeah. really do. We've been reading some fun things this summer. For sure. Yeah. Speaking of fun, look at this. This I, is our yeah. teen DIY terrarium. Yeah. Um, you're going to get all the materials that you will need to you make this it. little thing. It's adorable. You'll get the plant, you'll get the soil, and you'll even get little min clay, um, polymer clay miniatures. There's a little um, hedgehog, I think, in there. There some mushrooms is. that are um, our own Miss Beth created for yeah. us. And you'll get all the materials to go ahead and create that. Yeah. That is one of our teen tween DIYs. That will be, the, you can start picking that up on July 16th. Registration is required because we only have a dozen of these um, kits ready to go. So the first 12 that sign up will be the ones that get oh, it. Oh, that's going to be a hot commodity. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That, these are adorable. I know. They really are. Yeah. So very cool. Uh-huh. Yep. Very and nice. She harvested the moss from her family's farm, I believe. So wow. that's kind of cool. That's very cool. So that's going to be on July 16th, registration required for the Teen Tween DIY. Excellent. Okay, in case you forgot or you didn't remember anything. <laughs> what? In case you forgot or you didn't remember anything. <laughs> oh, I guess that's the same thing. Is that <laughs> no, it's just, it's funny. How okay, you said it. bedtime, backyard story times. Um, we are, every week is a theme, so we're doing stories for you to fall asleep by. We're doing stories for you to come outside and, and have fun with us. Um, ages, uh, you know, it's families. You know, we have had such nice family turnout. Um, it's the uh, bedtime story times are Monday through Thursday, and we do those. It shows at 7 p.m., right? Just in time for me to go to bed. Works for me. <laughs> And the backyard story times are Tuesdays, and that's at 1030, and as always, rain date is on Wednesday. And so that you know, like, uh, we have a tent up there. It's so nice. Yeah. For the whole summer, we're going to have a tent that even if we have, like, a super hot day at the end of July or 1st of August or what, it, we're it in the undercover. shade. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's so nice. Yeah, it looked really nice. The first one was today, and it was Miss Linda and Miss Patty were doing it, and I went out at the end um, to take some pictures, and it looked like it just looked like everything. It really worked well. out perfectly. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun, and everybody that attended enjoyed it. So wonderful. We are keeping those going. Uh, the yeah, July themes: elephants, farm animals, pets. I don't know. Got Why would you want to miss out right on that? Yeah. Very okay. Fun. Very cool. Yep. All right, so um, in, in earlier in July, we did a um, pet show and tell family Zoom meetup. So we're going to do another family Zoom meetup, but this one is to show off your collections because if your child is anything like mine, they probably collect a wide variety of interesting things that they mm -hmm. probably want to show off. Okay. Like a seashell collection, maybe a card collection, Owl maybe... Palette. Um, no, uh, that would be odd, but I mean, whatever, to hey, each his own, hey. a stuffed animal collection. True. When I was a young child, I collected babies. beanie babies, yep. right? Um, so I can guarantee you, Miss Kelsey had a beanie baby collection. Absolutely. Yeah. Doll collection. I did too. <laughs> so, I did. Um, you know, that will, we're going to show, you can just meet up, show off your collections, tell us a little bit about something. So it's like a show and tell, but love virtual. It. Um, it's going to be on July 22nd at 6.30. So just show, just register to get the link, come out with that and show off your your collections. I love it. I'd yeah. love to see the collections. Yeah. Because people are interesting. Yeah. And, are into like I have a friend that collects lighthouses. That's cool. You know, because she lived always lived on the shore, and yeah. so she has all kinds of, you know. Right. So I had knew someone who collected Santa Clauses. Yeah. That's that's one. Yeah. I when I was growing up, I collect Precious Moments figurines. Oh, okay. Um, I still have that collection. Um, I also used to collect Pogs. Which, if anybody shows up with a Pog collection, I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, what? 
<laughs> what is it? A pog? A pog was, um, this is for all the millennial parents out there. Okay. Um, they I'm were like, look, yeah, your kids would have been too young for this. Um, they were, because it was a very, very short-lived fad, maybe two years tops. They were little cardboard circles about this big, yeah. also known as caps. You, and then they would, and you would buy them, you would buy them and um, they all had different pictures and stuff on them. And then you would get your slammers and it was like a game. And you would like slam your slammer down on these pogs and whichever one's like flipped over, you got to keep. It was like a trading card kind of idea. Oh. But um, I don't know, somebody made bank on selling these like circle pieces of cardboard because oh, okay. that's what they were. And I remember whenever I was in probably third, fourth grade-ish, um, mm. anytime we went anywhere on vacation or any place, I mean, they sold them everywhere. And I was getting, I had this big plastic tube full of these pogs. So okay. that maybe is not a clip, but okay. somebody somewhere still has pogs because they end up someplace. I don't know whatever happened to mine, but yeah. I know that. Everybody, all children collect something. So yeah, okay. I'm interested to see what the children of 2021 are collecting. Okay. Because the children out. of 97 were collecting pogs. All right. <laughs> it's true. Kelsey knows it. Anyways, um, so we also have, we're bringing back Miss Patty in her virtual book babies, mother goose. I love these. I, I know. They're some of my favorite virtual programs that we're offering. Um, I have the pleasure of getting to help Patty film her programs each yeah. month. And honestly, filming those programs are probably the most entertaining hour of my week, month, whatever oh, you yeah. want to say. She's hilarious. She's so great. Even without her audience, she still plays it up so well. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. God love it. So that's good. You do have to register for those because they are, they are pre-recorded, but they do have copyrighted music on them. So we're not able to just share it out in the world. We can just send you a private, a private link so you can view those. Um, so sign up for Book Baby's Mother Goose. That's going to be on her July one will be, will air out on the 20th, but so you sign up before then. So cool. Yeah. Yep. Always good stuff happening here. What did you collect as a child, Miss Linda? Um, Besides what, Beanie Babies, I that would not have been when babies. you were a child. <laughs> um, I had little pianos. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, little pian. Well, yeah, I had a really sad story that brings to mind. Did you lose your pianos? Well, when well, I, I was, collected pigs too. Did yeah, I remember. Well, when I was in sixth grade, I got a piano. We used to go to the shore, New Jersey Shore, like Stone Harbor mm -hmm. or those places every single summer and went to this place that was selling blown glass. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen, like yeah. they'll make all these cool things out of blown glass. And I was able to get this blown glass that looked like a little baby grand piano with a little stool and everything. And I, it, yeah, and this is sixth grade. We, I swear we were a lot younger, like back then than the sixth graders would be now. They'd probably laugh at me. But I brought it in for something because I think we were talking about something in the history class. And I, I'm not even going to give out the teacher's name, but he, he looked at it and was doing it and he broke it. <gasps> I was devastated. I never got, I've, I apparently have never She's gotten got over it. She's got some PTSD over this I do. Piano. Of my crushed, um, he felt horrible. But I felt worse. <laughs> so, and if she remembered, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, kids like, I remember the kids do Pokemon cards and baseball cards. And oh, I have a collection of like autographs. Yeah. You know, a lot of autograph books and albums of people that I've met. And I'm more of like, I'm an autograph junkie. I love meeting famous people. So yeah. I have a lot of that yeah. that I could bring in. There you go. Well, zoom it up. Well, Oh, yeah, that's right. Just from your own home. Just oh, show us oh, your Oh, that's stuff. right. Okay. I don't even have to bring it in. Aww. All right. I'm sorry about your piano, Miss Linda. I know. It was a sad pink. story. It was pink, too. Oh. It was glass, like, like clear glass, glass, but it had, like, pink, like, friend, like yeah. pink around it. You would have loved it. Yeah. And you, for the last 10 years, it's still been bothering you. Yeah. It's only been, I know. <laughs> I can't shake it. Can't shake I'm... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Are we doing, we have time for books. Yes, we do. You can go first. Okay. Well, I'm going to back up and go. We didn't have a chance to do uh, books the last time. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple and just show you some of the things that we have um, 
by Eric Carl. And we love Eric Carl. We talked about him all the time last time. I really like this. Um, this is a video. Of course, you can learn all about him. Eric Carl, picture writer, the art of the picture book. And you can. I like his little head on the caterpillar. That's so I funny. know. Is that cute? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it, it reflects on the creative life he has led for decades as a creator of more than 70 books for children. Should I just go through some of you these? Just go do a couple, yeah. Yeah, this is cute. Hugs and Kisses, the Grouchy Ladybug. This was a cute one. This isn't even that old. I think it was like a 2018. I'll just go through them because I'm going to do um, Beverly Cleary next. Air Carl, I love this one too. It's called Pancakes, Pancakes. But you know, you have to show his artwork. You know, of how he does those collage, that collage type. And like I said, we do not have a hungry caterpillar to save our life in right now because it is so popular. This is the very quiet cricket. Well, it gives an example of his apple with the worm coming out another good one. So if you have not read an Eric Carle book or have, you know, read one to your children, I say come in and do it. Eric Carle's The Very Quiet Cricket. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So real quick, um, we mentioned this in our last episode too, but it's still, you do still have time to sign up for the summer reading program. And if you have not come in yet, Come and get your goodie bag. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I want yep. to thank um, McDonald's and Wendy's and Rita's for providing us with some coupons so you get a free Happy Meal or Frosty or some kind of wonderful, delicious treat. Um, so they're inside these bags too, just for coming in and picking them up. So I wanted to mention that real quick before I forgot. So I have some really cute summer YA reads. This one I meant to, I wanted to talk about when we in June when we were during Pride Month, but I didn't have it available yet. But I love the book Dumplin' by yeah, Julia too. Murphy. Yeah. And then she put out Puddin, which is about one of her friends. And this one is Pumpkin. Um, and this year, Prom's a Drag. And so this is a really great, um, look how fun. This I like that. This is a really that. great book for, um, if you're, I don't think, that the books all are standalone novels. They do have connecting characters, though. So you, if you have not read Dumplin' yet, I do highly recommend it. It's a uh, it's phenomenal book. I liked it, too. And they made it into a really great night as well. Um, really great teen read, um, but this one is her latest um, about Waylon Russell Bruber um, and his his story. So I I can't wait to read it. I'm super excited. This one might come up with me today because I'm really looking forward to it. Although I don't think I've read I haven't read Puddin yet either. So no, I, guess I, I haven't read that. The I'll only one to... I've read is Dumplin'. Yeah, me too. I'll have to go back. And this one super super cute. Um, a teeny bopper romance called Better Than the Movies. And you can see there's some illustrations of some famous movie scenes like the Say Anything, which is my personal favorite teen movie, right here at the Boombox and Dirty Dancing, The Lift. Oh, fun. Um, and on the back it says, you know, Bridget Jones plus Mark Darcy, Harry plus Sally, Tom oh. Hanks plus everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Um, and I love you, know, you Tom. So Hanks. she, um, this is by Lynn Painter and um, our our girl here, Liz. She always has known that the boy next door, Wes, was definitely not void for material. I mean, he's the kid who put the um, monster, put a frog in her Barbie dream house. She, he hit a monster under her uh, her lawn mown, Several, uh, all kinds of different stuff that pranks that she's pulled on him, but. Um, you know, obviously something is about to happen with, with their friendship. So That's better cool. than the movies. Super cute um, teen little romance, which are always fun. And, oh, and, absolutely. And feel good stories. So I'm excited. And look how fun. I just love the cover art. In I do, books. too. We, we've talked about that so many times. The cover art is just getting better and better. It on is. It's so, always so enticing. Like yes. every time I see it, like you talk about it and what it's about, which sounds good. But before you even get to it and you look at the cover and go, oh, that's really cool. I, that looks like something, you know. Something fun. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, 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 Beverly Cleary. We talked about passed away in March at the beautiful age of 104. We had several. The nice thing about Beverly Cleary is that we have a ton of it. She's written so many books. Beezus and Ramona, 
So we've got Ramona with her little sister. And then that got made into a, a uh, Ramona and Beezus movie. You can go on your vacations. I listen to books all the time in my car. Ramona the Pest, as an example, we've got a lot of her books on CD. And um, if you're like me, I, I just, I'm like addic addicted to books on CD in my car. And yeah. like I'm reading something at home, reading something here, mm -hmm. and listening to something. Uh, Beverly Cleary. This is, we talked about at the beginning, Dear Mr. Henshaw. This is the follow-up. Oh, I didn't know there was a follow-up. Yep. This is a follow-up called Strider. So these two I bet there's a go dog together. In this story. Yeah, you think there's a dog <laughs> there? And of course her famous Ramona Quimby, age eight. And then do you want to do some, and then I'll do my last two because I was sure, going to show you some biographies. Sure, this is a new graphic novel that I'm that looks pretty oh. exciting called Incredible Doom, um, and it's the first book in what's going to be a, looks like a series because it's volume one. And this is about um, it says Welcome to a New Age, the Age of the Internet. So it is historical oh. fiction. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, for when this family gets their first computer and what having the internet in their home is like for the first time. So, um, wow, you know, incredible it doom. It yeah. sounds like so, it must not be good. Right. So it's, I just, it, um, I love all those, it's just the black and blue mm -hmm. um, and white illustrations, which reminds me a lot of um, Craig Thomas's Blankets, which is my favorite graphic novel. Um, Oh, it still smells like a new book. Um, so brand <laughs> new, 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 new graphic novel, which is always fun. And also for the adult reading challenge, um, reading a graphic novel is one of mm. the um, challenges on there. So this we would be a good choice for that because our novels. adults remember what it's like to not have internet. Our tweens, not so much. Right. But that's why I called it historical fiction for them because, it, you know, it obviously that's takes right. place. They, so. Their life, they've always had it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Back so. in my day. Right, back in my day. <laughs> so Incredible Doom by Matthew Bogert and Jesse Holden. Great. Their new graphic novel, just hot off the press. Yeah, that looks fun. And I'm going to conclude my books of Beverly Cleary by just a couple about learning about her. Beverly Cleary, A Girl from Yam Hill, a memoir. I mean, everything you want to know about her, but then bring it down to an easier level for children. Uh, the biography of Beverly Cleary called Just Like Beverly. Oh, that looks cute. And it says, Growing to Greatness. Very cool. So one that we can relate to. Love it. The kids. So much is going on this summer. So many new good books, so uh -huh. many fun programs to come and check out. So we hope to see you at these. Events. Absolutely. At come something. Get these, come get these books and come check us out. Yeah. And we'll point you in the direction to way many more books. Yes. And other things. So we're here for you, and yeah. now I guess we'll see you in August, right? Oh, I know. Our back to school episode. Oh no! <laughs> no, they said it. I right. could be. <laughs> oh, she said the S word. Honestly. <laughs> yep. All right. Have Enjoy a wonderful your day, July. everyone. Yes, happy see you next July. Month.